Hey everybody, welcome back to my garage gym. I'm Curtis and we're gonna be looking at the Rogue TB1 trap bar. We're gonna be looking at both the old original one and the 2.0. So real quick, I wanted to touch on the difference between the original model and the 2.0. When you're looking at it from the outside, aesthetically, the first thing that you notice is that this bracket that is on all four corners of the trap bar, that is the main way that you can tell the difference between the version one and the version two. You can also come up and kind of tap the sleeves, and that's another way to tell, but not as definitive, and this is visible from a distance. What they ended up doing was they wanted to lighten up the load of the trap bar to make it easier to move around the gym. And so they ended up going with a Schedule 80 tube with a welded end cap. If you've watched some of my videos in the past, you know that that's something that I really do appreciate. I'm not a big fan of open end caps. I just don't like the look. I also don't like the look of shoving a piece of plastic in there. And so by going with the welded end cap on the Schedule 80 tubing, they both decrease the weight of the bar by a claim 25% and uh, it still has an aesthetic appearance that is, in my opinion, way more attractive than some plastic end cap. So today I'm going to cover what it is, how you can use it, some cons, some pros, and then of course we're going to touch on price and at the end of it I'll give you my recommendation. So for the sake of the rest of the video, I'm just gonna put the 1.0 away and we're just gonna talk about the 2.0. All right, so first and foremost, what is it? Well, it's a trap bar. Let's get a little bit more specific. What this is, is a single height, meaning it only has one set of handles and they are flush with the center of the plates. And it's a trap bar and it traps you inside of it. I don't actually, so it's a trapezoid, I guess, is why it's actually called a trap bar. Uh, but obviously, you know, you don't wanna get trapped there is a TB2 model from Rogue, and the TB2, the only difference between the TB2 and the TB1 is the addition of a handle, and I think it's like a five inch uh, difference. It's enough of a difference that it changes the movement significantly, but it's not so drastic that if you have the bar upside down that a standard Olympic plate would cause the handle to like rest on the ground. Now with all the development that went into trap bars, really a lot of last year, so I'm talking about the Alico trap bar, the Kabuki strength trap bar. Uh, there are several other companies that I'm just blanking right now as I'm trying to think of them. They also have these open-ended trap bars and they have feet on the one end that you can pick them up and load the bar by yourself. It's also not an open-ended trap bar, it's a closed off trap bar which is gonna severely limit some of the things that you can use it for, which leads us straight into the next part. How do you use it? You can do deadlifts, you can do frame carries, you can do, I guess, frame walks for distance to work on your grip. You can also, with this one, there's an additional feature that it's rackable. So you can put this in a standard sized power rack and do overhead movements with it if that's what you wanted to do. You can also just use it out of the rack to make it easier to facilitate plate changes, or just for storage, I guess you can put it in the rack as well. It has 16 inches of loadable sleeve, which is plenty, and it's actually something of note, because if you go and you start looking at the cheaper trap bars, and I think we know the ones I'm talking about, it's the silver chrome tube ones, and the sleeves are only like that long. Now you can get those heavy if you have access to 100 pound plates, but this thing is significantly easier to get heavy. So if you are someone that needs to train heavy at home, this might be a good option for you. It also has tons of reinforcement, typical rogue engineering, everything on it is solid. 
A quick note on this though, you do need to buy and utilize axle collars or a specialty collar. So instead of having the two inch outside diameter on the loading sleeve, it has a 1.9. Because of that, you do have to keep an inventory of spare axle collars if you want to use this. And you don't necessarily have to, it's just if you prefer to have collars for the deadlift. Let's cover some, pro, uh, some cons right away. So some of the cons to this thing is it has that rogue powder coat. Now that rogue powder coat is really nice for things like the handle or things like the frame because it's durable on things that don't necessarily go metal on metal. Where it's not as good is on the sleeve. So obviously that powder coat on the sleeve is something that's gonna chip off with time. It doesn't take much time. Most people, the first time they load this thing up with weight, they're gonna notice right away that a lot of the paint is gonna immediately just chip off the sleeve. Additionally, it's not an open-ended trap bar and it doesn't facilitate easy play changes by yourself. Now there's nothing wrong with throwing a change plate under the end of your deadlift load in order to facilitate plate change, but right now we're at a point where open-ended trap bars that have built-in feet almost seem to be the standard. So it makes me wonder why Rogue maybe hasn't adapted their TV1 to be open-ended. Maybe it's something they're working on in the future. Maybe it's something that they don't care about. Who knows? Another thing I don't necessarily like about it is so that the knurling itself is nice, but there's no knurl marks. So when you're trying to line up, you have this huge handle to line up on, and it's knurled the whole way. So unless you take your time to line up on the, the center of your load, oftentimes what will end up happening is you'll pick up and the whole apparatus, the whole, the whole trap bar will actually tilt if you picked it up a little bit off center. So one of the things that I think that they could improve on is maybe just putting a knurl mark in the middle or just stop the knurl at exactly the middle point of this handle. That way it gives you some sort of indicator, some sort of mark that you can go for and grab a hold of. Now let's roll into the pros. Pros I touched on before, but the loadable sleeve length being 16 inches long, with that much area to load weight, it's not difficult, even with bumper plates, to get up to a weight that's respectable in most sports. Additionally, that heavy duty construction I touched on before, as well as this reinforcement in the corners. This thing will have zero whip on you coming off the floor. So with a lot of barbells, to include those cheaper trap bars, you will get a small amount of whip in the bar. So basically some ways that I think that they can make it even better would be to open up the end because if you open up the end you open up the amount of movements that you can do with it. You can go on and start doing like walking lunges. You can do some of the step ups. You can even do like a bicep curl with an open ended but again you're limited on a lot of that with this particular bar. Another pro with this piece of equipment is that it has a spacing between the handles that can accommodate most people. Now, if you are like a 350 pound, six foot four power lifter, like just heavy power lifter, you, you may have a little bit of problem in here, but I'd be willing to bet that almost anybody can realistically fit between these handles with no problems at all. Now let's talk about price. So this bar without shipping is just $295. $295 really isn't that bad. If you go out and you compare it to some other companies, so Frey Fitness has a somewhat comparable bar at somewhat of a comparable price. It seems like any time that you really get into this square frame construction and you get away from that chrome tube construction, the price point falls right at about $300. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. What I would recommend to most people is that if you're, if you're in the market for a TB1, Skip the TB1 and get the TB2. So if you buy the TB2, you'll have that additional handle and you can still use it if you just use it upside down in a traditional trap bar. That leads us to my recommendation for this product. Now, I've had my bar for a long time. I've had it for like three years. I've used it somewhat regularly. I don't program trap bar deadlift all that often, but it is something that I do train for. And I think that this bar is a very solid bar for training that event. Would I recommend it? I would lean towards no. Personally, I think that going for the open-ended trap bar, especially in a garage gym setting, is just a little bit nicer. It's easier to store, a little bit more compact. It's also easier to use when you're by yourself. 
plus you have a lot more movements you can do. So for me personally, I would say that I probably wouldn't recommend the TB1 or the TB2. What I would recommend you doing is maybe investing a little bit more money and getting something like the, the Kabuki open-ended trap bar, which I reviewed, you can watch that review up here. Or if you even wanted to go for a less expensive one, you could probably have a local fabricator zap you one of these things together pretty easily. Or if you have this bar, maybe even get it modified to be open-ended. All that it would take is a little bit of counterweight on the front end that you decide to cut off. So that's my review of the Rogue TB1 trap bar. Please use the comment section down below and tell me what you guys think. Do you disagree with the things that I've said? I think it's a decent bar. I just don't necessarily think that it's the best bar out there, especially for most garage gym owners. Again, I highly recommend that open-ended trap bar. But again, use the comments down below. Tell me what you guys think. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. More videos coming out. Trying to get one to two videos a week and trying to get a little bit more regular. I appreciate each and every single one of you that watch these videos. And remember that when it comes to garage gyms, it should always be better, awesome, and badass. I'll see you guys next time.